Good afternoon and thank you for joining today's session. My name is Mawa Osman. I'm one of the digital health educators, the Australian Digital Health Agency. And I'm joined today by my colleague, uh, Tunde Cantor, who will be delivering uh, the presentation today. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to them and their cultures and to elders past, present and emerging. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we proceed. Your microphone will be muted throughout the presentation today. You can, however, ask a question at any time using the questions tab. They will be answered um, at the conclusion of the session. Um, the reason uh, we're not uh, allowing the use of the microphones to ask questions today is because we are recording the session so that people can watch it at a later time if they're unable to uh, make the live webinar. Now, if you'd like to collapse the GoToWebinar interface, just click on the orange arrow and this will um, collapse that interface and minimize it on the side of your screen. Um, to expand that interface, you click on the same arrow again and you'll be able to see the GoToWebinar uh, panel, um, which will allow you to ask questions. If you have any issues with mismatch between screen and sound, um, you may try and exit the webinar entirely and rejoin using the same link and hopefully that will fix uh, the problem. So what are we going to cover today? Um, just a moment, I see that somebody has raised a question about the slides. Yes, the slides will be available. You will receive a copy of the slides in the post event email following the conclusion of the webinar. So what is my health record uh, is the first thing we're going to start with today. And then we're going to talk about how it can benefit you as a consumer, um, what's in the record and how, it, how we use the My Health Record to keep your health information secure. And then finally, we're going to finish off with where you can go to learn more about My Health Record and digital health uh, and the resources that are available to you to do that. So here's where we start. What is My Health Record? The My Health Record is essentially an online summary of an individual's key health information. It's personally controlled. And what that means is you choose as the owner of that record what stays in your record, uh, what goes up to your record, who can access your, your record, so which healthcare providers. Um, there's some access controls that you can put in place. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on in the session today. Um, but there's also the option to um, decide how often you want to interact with the My Health Record system. So some people are happy to have their My Health Record and their healthcare providers access it and contribute to it, and they don't really engage with it themselves. And others prefer to engage with the system, and certainly that's what we encourage. Um, we encourage people to be aware of what's in their record and to um, you know, recommend to healthcare providers to view what's in their record so that they can obtain accurate health information about them. You can also choose to uh, nominate a representative that can help you manage that My Health record if you believe you need some support in managing that record. So that's also a, an option that's available uh, for people and you can choose the level of control that a person can have. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, having a representative accessing your My Health record a little bit later on in the session as well. So the My Health record is a part of a national system. It's available anywhere around Australia, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, by healthcare providers who are authorised to access the system. And of course, the My Health Record is protected, not only by the highest layers of cyber security, but also by legislation so that any intentional misuse of information stored in the My Health Record is severely punishable by law, not just for the organisation that's concerned, but also for the individual healthcare provider. So who has a My Health Record? The majority of Australians have a My Health Record with over 23.5 million total My Health Records. And what that means is if a group of 10 people is in a room, it's likely that at least nine out of 10 of those people will have a My Health Record. The volume of uh, My Health Records that now have data in them has grown by almost 600,000 in the last year. So 
So as I mentioned, most people have a My Health record and the reason is that from February 2019, everyone in Australia that had a Medicare card um, or a DVA card was automatically given a My Health record unless they decided to opt out, which means that you probably have one. If you've arrived in Australia recently, um, you would have had the option to select to have a My Health record when you were completing your Medicare enrolment. Uh, if you are a person that does not have Medicare or Department of Veterans Affairs benefits, you may still be able to register for a My Health record. So what's inside the My Health record? Currently, and these statistics are at January this year, there's over 849 million documents in the system that have been uploaded by consumers or healthcare providers. So that's made up of um, you know, clinical documents that are uploaded from uh, healthcare organisations like hospitals, um, you know, blood test results from uh, pathology labs, um, some specialist reports have also are also uh, increasing in number being uploaded to the My Health record. Um, information uploaded from GPs and pharmacies, so things like medicines prescribed and dispensed, uh, as well as documents uploaded by consumers as well. So you can upload information to your own My Health record. Um, so things like the medicines that you may be taking or allergies that you may have that you wish to uh, record in your My Health record. Of note, there's over 268,000 people uh, who have now registered from My Health Record who had previously opted out of having a My Health Record or had cancelled their record. So there's more and more people now joining. So what are the types of documents available in a little bit more detail? So things that you can view in your My Health Record are things like a shared health summary that may have been uploaded by your main healthcare provider, like your general practitioner or a registered nurse at the clinic, or an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health worker with a certificate for. There's also discharge summaries. Uh, so when you've been to a public hospital and you've been discharged from hospital, um, that discharge summary, a copy of it, as well as um, going to your GP through the normal channels, uh, they would also upload a copy of that to your My Health record. There can also be event summaries that can be uploaded by any healthcare provider, whether it's an allied health provider like a physiotherapist um, or a speech pathologist. Um, there's also test results, um, so pathology testing, um, diagnostic imaging reports also being uploaded to the My Health record. There's also access to Medicare billing and immunisation information. So uh, immunisation information coming, of course, from the Australian Immunisation Register. And we saw how useful it was to have quick and accurate access to a person's immunisation information as we went through uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So very useful to have access to that in a timely manner. Now, through the Medicare information, there's also access to organ donor register information uh, as well. Now, personally entered information that you can upload to your My Health record or your um, nominated uh, or authorised representative can upload to the My Health record can include things like um, personal health summaries. So you can detail the medicines that you take, the health conditions that you have. Um, you can also have personal health notes in there. And these are notes for yourself. Um, they would not be visible to healthcare providers. So it's just a safe space to store your own personal health notes that would not be viewable to healthcare providers. There's also advanced care planning documents that can be stored in the My Health record, as well as custodian details. So if you have completed advanced care planning documentation, um, you can upload that as a PDF to your My Health record, uh, as well as details of who the custodian is or are. There's also an opportunity for you to upload emergency contact information, as well as childhood development information as well, for children that you may care for. So how are people using the My Health record? 
So we've got more and more people engaging with the My Health Record. Having a look at the statistics, you can see that there was a big spike in January 2022, where we had 13.75 million people view information in their My Health Record. And that was due to a spike in COVID-19 cases and the introduction of masks indoors. Uh, and people had a need to have quick access to proof of their COVID-19 vaccinations and PCR test results uh, and other key health information in a timely manner. So we saw more usage of the My Health Record there to view their health information. But certainly the trend uh, has continued. Um, so in January 23, so um, just this year, there's 5.39 million people who've accessed and viewed information in their record. So I mentioned that there are privacy and security settings uh, that you can uh, place on your My Health record, um, and we call these advanced controls. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll talk a little bit more about the options later on in the session. Um, but in terms of context, knowing that there's over 23 million My Health records, there's only about uh, 50.8 thousand people. So that's less than 51,000 people who have chosen to place any advanced access controls in their records. So there's a lot of trust in the My Health record in terms of um, protecting security and privacy. So now that we know a little bit more about what's in the record and how people are using it, let's talk a little bit about how My Health Record can benefit you. You don't need to remember your medical history uh, if you've got a My Health Record um, or key uh, information about the medicines that you take. Um, it can certainly help uh, you know, diminish the need for you to keep repeating the same information over to different healthcare providers that you see having to say your story over and over again. Um, and it can also help avoid unnecessary testing and scans. So if you see one doctor and then you're referred to a specialist that may not necessarily have access to the test results that um, your GP had requested or another specialist, um, you know, doesn't have access to something else that another specialist that's coordinating with your GP uh, has requested, it, you know, it means that you may be repeating blood tests unnecessarily, you may be repeating scans, um, when allowing them access to this information may mean they don't need to repeat tests unnecessarily, saving you time, effort, and obviously um, saving uh, and making the health system a lot more efficient as well. The My Health Record can also increase the quality of care you receive from healthcare providers because it means they can access accurate health information about you um, while you're with them, instead of having to send you away to first go and collect information about you by sending faxes and forms to other healthcare providers to obtain that history before they can make decisions that are tailored to your specific health needs. So the My Health Record allows you and your representatives to add information to your own health record. And over time, it gives a detailed view of your health. So I mentioned earlier that you can choose to nominate people who can assist you in managing your My Health record. And this is exactly what a nominated representative is. So it allows you to choose an individual that you trust that can access and manage the information in your My Health record um, with you or on your behalf. So this is really helpful, um, you know, in cases where sometimes people uh, prefer not to use technology, so uh, they're happy for a relative, a family member or carer to do so for them. Um, when you um, elect to have a nominated representative or when you invite someone to become a nominated representative, you can choose the level of access that you grant them in your record. So whether you're allowing them access to view information only or whether they can actually make changes and upload things to your My Health record. So you, as the owner of that record, always have complete control over uh, what your nominated representatives can see and do in your record. An authorised representative is someone who is responsible for managing a My Health record for someone who can't manage it themselves. So in the case of children, for example, um, children who are under the age of 14, their parents are automatically their authorised representative. 
once they turn 14, uh, the parent is no longer an authorised representative for that child uh, and the child can manage their own record or if they choose, they can then um, invite their parent to become a nominated representative that can uh, manage their My Health record. So in other situations um, where, you know, it's your the authorised representative of uh, a family member or someone who's no longer able to make decisions for themselves, you can apply to become an authorised representative uh, and that will essentially grant you uh, complete access to a person's uh, My Health record. Uh, you can manage it as if it was their own, but of course to apply for this, you need to have appropriate documentation to support um, that application. So um, it's there's an automatic setup for um, parents of children who are under the age of 14, but in the case of others uh, who cannot manage their own record, um, there will need to be, you know, documentary evidence such as an enduring power of attorney, for example. So now I'll hand over to my colleague uh, Tunde, who will continue um, with the presentation and tell us a little bit more about My Health Record and the controls that you can place on your own record. Thank you, Mala. So how does My Health Record keep your information secure? Well, there are many safeguards in place to protect the information held in the My Health Record system, such as strong encryption, firewalls, secure logging processes, audit logging, and there are also people, processes, technologies, um, settings, and legislation in place as well. So in, um, in the area of people, we have people that work at the Australian Digital Health Agency in our cybersecurity centre, and they monitor the My Health Record system. We also have personnel involved with the administration of the My Health Record system, and they undergo security checks. You are able to control the privacy settings in your My Health record. Um, you are able to control who can see what's in the system. We also have a range of processes that limit access to the My Health record system. So we have external software that your prescriber or your dispenser or your healthcare provider may be using, and this has to go through some conformance um, processes and checks, it has to reach a certain standard to be able to connect to the system. This also includes apps, so for example the, My, the new My Health app, and we have some technology as well. So the My Health record system uses a layered security model, it has multiple security controls in place to protect the confidentiality of your information and to protect the integrity and the privacy of, of everything that's in the system. And all of the data in the My Health Record system is stored in Australia as well. Legislation. The My Health Record system protects your rights as a consumer uh, due to the legislative framework that governs the system. So the primary purpose of My Health Record is support, to support your healthcare. Um, there are some rules around who can access and what you uh, should be asked to disclose. So any information within your My Health Record cannot be used for insurance or for employment purposes. Information from your My Health Record cannot be released without some sort of law enforcement um, court order or it can't be released without your consent. Your health data also cannot be sold or used for any type of commercial purposes and it's a criminal offence for someone to access your record for any purpose other than providing you with the health care that you require and there are serious penalties if people don't follow the rules. There are My Health Record privacy controls in place that you can set. So you can choose to enable your My Health Record privacy settings to control which healthcare providers can access your record. You can, for example, set a limited document access code, which means that only the, per the healthcare provider organisation that you give the code to can access a document in your record. Uh, you can also choose to set a record access code, which means that 
only the healthcare provider organisation you give the record access to, record access code to, can access your record. However, in an emergency, and this is, um, you know, in the case that you cannot give your record access code or your limited uh, document access code to your healthcare provider, um, your healthcare provider may access your record in um, such an emergency via the break glass function. But these types of accesses are monitored and logged, so you'll always be able to see if this has occurred in your record. You can choose to receive an SMS or an email alert that in real time that tells you if your healthcare provider has used the record at uh, the emergency access or if anyone has um, performed any action in your record, such as uploaded information um, or um, yeah, access to your record for, for any reason. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the emergency access or the break glass function provision can only be used in an emergency. So this is for when a healthcare provider believes that there's a serious threat to your life, health or safety. And an example of this might be if you've been in an accident and you arrive at the hospital at the emergency department and you're unconscious and you cannot share your record access code or a limited document access code. And the healthcare provider that's um, caring for you uh, believes that they have to access your record to prevent a further threat to your life. So um, this is also a time when um, your carer or your authorised or nominated representative may be able to share a code, but if they can't, um, this is when that healthcare provider will potentially try to access your record. We have some more information available um, for you to learn about uh, the things that I've just discussed in the webinar and we've got some e-learning resources. So these are available for free and they are available on a mobile phone or on a computer. And if you'd like to, you can scan the QR code here if you're on a mobile device to access or you can enter the link into your computer and I'll just show you where it goes. So you can see here we've got uh, a course, My Health Record. Just click on the tile. And then we've got Introduction to My Health Record. And we've got a number of topics available covering the content that we've shared in this webinar. Uh, we've got about My Health Record, getting started with My Health Record, introduction to the record home, and just moving on a little bit further ahead to Medicare information settings. So if you'd like to access these modules, you don't have to log in anywhere, you just have to follow the links or scan the QR code that I showed you. We've also got some further information and support. So if you would like some help with getting started with My Health Record, or any type of my health record concern or query, please call the My Health Record helpline or reach out to the agency using the information on the screen. Thank you.